One of the reasons I don't work when I have the opportunity is because I don't have a clear understanding of suffering. Will you please explain the difference between what we call suffering and what the work means by conscious suffering? I'd like to start off with the premise that one of the reasons I don't work when I have the opportunity is because I don't have a clear understanding of suffering. That's not true. The reasons we don't work is not are not because we don't have a clear understanding of suffering. The reasons we don't work are, are myriad, but that's not one of them. Having a clear understanding of suffering isn't really going to help you take the opportunities to work. So first of all, it's a good idea to start observing the truth about you in that particular area. So when one says, one of the reasons I don't work when I have the opportunity is because I don't have a clear understanding of suffering. It's a good idea to see what the lie is, why we are lying. We're obfuscating, we're lying for a reason. We're covering something, we're hiding something, we're keeping something separate. We don't want something to come up to be looked at, to be seen for what it actually is. So we're somehow protecting our precious self, our precious false personality, and justifying not working. Well, I, I, I would take the opportunity to work if only I really understood what suffering was. Well, come here, I'll show you what suffering is. <laughs> it's not like that. But that's what your father would say when you were a child. Remember, well, I'll, show, I'll show you what suffering is. Don't cry, I'll give you something to cry about. You remember all that? Well, so will you please explain the difference between what we call suffering and what the work means by conscious suffering? Yes, that I can do. But the other part is something that you will have to do for yourself. You're going to have to look for yourself and see why is it that you're lying to yourself about that? Why is it that you're justifying the fact that you don't take the opportunities to work? Like, why do you even have to pretend that you do, that you would take an opportunity to work? Why would anyone here feel the need to pretend that they take some opportunities to work. We don't take very many opportunities to work. Okay, so let's talk about suffering, because suffering is something that we that none of us really want to do. Like, we avoid suffering. We have this huge aversion to suffering. We cling to pleasant sensations. We eschew unpleasant sensations. We run away from them, screaming in terror. We don't like unpleasant sounds. We don't like unpleasant feelings. We don't like anything unpleasant. We don't like unpleasant foods. We don't like unpleasant days. We don't like unpleasant people. We don't like unpleasant. Suffering is having to tolerate the unpleasantness of life. Gurdjieff is very clear about what this life is. He says it's a pain factory. Well, a pain factory is something that cranks out not sausages, not boxes, not pianos, not teacups, but suffering. This planet cranks out suffering. That's what it does. Everything here is suffering. Everything here is suffering. To one degree or another, at one time or another, everything here is suffering. If I'm if I'm, if I'm happy now, that'll change. It's okay. Of course you will. And, and, and that's, a, that's a wonderful attitude. Um, but since you have taken such a beating lately, I'm not even going to start to pick on that attitude. It's not a wonderful attitude. I was being sarcastic. Okay, let's get back to suffering. Um, so this, this, this planet that we're living on is a pain factory that creates suffering, that grinds out suffering, that produces suffering the way GM produces cars. Well, I should probably say the way Japan produces cars, because they're much more efficient about it. And this planet is very efficient about producing suffering, very efficient. No opportunity is ever missed in, on this planet to produce suffering, because that's its job. Its job is to produce suffering. But how can you say that? Nature is so beautiful. Oh, yes, nature is so beautiful. It's like watching uh, seagulls eat baby tortoises as they try and run for the, for, the, for the safety of the ocean. That's always beautiful. 
I've always spent lots of time, or, or I like the March of the Penguins, when you see all of these little penguins, you know, who, who are driven by nature to march across this frozen wasteland without food, without anything, day after day, night after night, just marching on and marching on, to get out there to lay one egg and then have it freeze in a couple of nanoseconds because they stumbled and dropped it. That's always exciting to watch. What a beautiful thing that is. Or to see a, a little chick hatch and then freeze to death, boom, like that, because it got out of where it was supposed to be or couldn't find its mother or whatever. That's always beautiful. Or to watch um, predators devour prey while it's still living and kicking. That's always an exciting thing. You see, nature is not beautiful. It's a jungle out there. And you really... See, the, the thing that man has is we don't want to live by the laws of the jungle. We don't want to live like that. We've tried to lift ourselves above that so that it's not an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and dog eat dog. We have tried to do something about that. We've tried to raise ourselves above the purpose of nature. See, nature doesn't care about the babies. Nature doesn't care about all of that. It only cares that... It, it, it will produce 10,000 of this so that two can survive. It doesn't care about the other 9,998. It doesn't care. It only cares about the two that survived because that serves its purpose. But also, the death and suffering of the 9,998 serves its purpose too. But how? Well, it feeds something. Something ate. Something had a great meal. But that's so insensitive. Yes, that is. Because it doesn't have the same purpose for life that we have. And we only have that purpose when we raise ourselves and our consciousness to a place where we can accept something that is higher than nature's purpose. So suffering in the work sense is when we raise our consciousness to the point where we are willing to do something that is unpleasant. In other words, suffer consciously as a choice to get something that will help us to better our position and our level of being. That's the difference between the suffering that we have to say. Everybody on this planet is going to suffer. You're going to suffer. If you think you're not, you are totally deluded. You will suffer. You will suffer today. I don't know how, but you will suffer today. Now, what you do with that suffering is an entirely different matter. How you, how you take that suffering in, how you take the impressions in, and what you do with those impressions, that will determine a big difference in everything. You can take unpleasant sensations and turn them into something less unpleasant, or you can turn them some, into something more unpleasant. You can exacerbate the unpleasantness or you can alleviate or eliminate or reduce the unpleasantness according to how you take the impressions, where they fall on you, and what kind of ideas you mix with them as they come in. That's about suffering. That's the short version. Does that answer your question? Yes. Excellent.